I'm Mandir Kraft, and uh, Dan Olson, I think you're going to take this one for us. I am. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, we're here tonight to uh, present to you our Unmanned Aerial System Program. Uh, this is a program that uh, we've developed in conjunction with the Truckee Fire Protection District. Uh, and tonight what we're going to be talking about is a type of UAVs or drones that we've purchased, and they're all sitting up here on the front table. Uh, the collaboration and operations that we have with Truckee Fire, uh, how the training went, and what type of usage we um, use these for. The federal regulations involved in flying these, uh, they're different than uh, for private parties, for governmental agencies to be able to use these in the field. And then uh, a software program that we bought in conjunction with the drone program called PIX4D, and I'll talk more about that in depth in a little bit. So the program started in June of 2018. We purchased the three drones that you see on the table. Uh, the, the largest one is the Matrice uh, M210, and that one really uh, gives us the ability to do multiple things. Um, both, It's able to hold two separate types of cameras. One is uh, a FLIR, which is an infrared, so we can do um, nighttime flying uh, for search and rescue, things like that. And then the other one is a pretty powerful zoom lens on there that uh, I'll show you an example of in a video that we'll show in a little bit. Uh, the second one, the second one down, the next one is the uh, Inspire 2, and that also can accommodate the larger cameras, but only one at a time, and that would be used in, in different deployments uh, around town and then the smaller one is is more for a quick deployment um, we can use this for also for gaining film for social media type things uh, marketing and, and and things like that uh, this you know could also be used for a quick uh, search of uh, you know around a house or something to make sure it's safe for fire and that sort of thing it's a lot easier to deploy a lot quicker um, as I said the two different cameras that are mounted on the larger drone right now the flare and the zoom um, were additional uh, additions that we put on on there and all the drones have been outfitted with a GPS tracker in the event um, you know, they were to get lost, we're able to find them with a handheld device that will lead us right up to the drone. Uh, the collaboration is something that um, we're really excited about because it's not, this type of program wouldn't be something that we would do on our own. And similar, the fire department wouldn't be able to do it on their own. It's just, there's not enough justification to do uh, the size of program that we're, that we've created to, to do this. Um, as you see there, the, the drones have been <clears throat> become more useful and more uh, popular in both police and fire services in different operations. Um, all costs of the equipment was split between the town and the Truckee Fire Protection District. All the equipment that we have is housed at Truckee Fire just because they had the space for all the batteries and, and the chargers and everything that we have. And then the training was the same for all the pilots uh, that are flying these drones. The pilots were chosen based on their type of assignment that they have with each department. Um, for the Truckee Police Department, we selected detectives, um, and then just prior experience, some officers have uh, a lot of experience flying drones, um, personal drones, so we, we brought them into the mix to help out. Different things that we would do with these drones at this point is uh, search and rescue is a big one for both agencies. Uh, disaster response is another big one for both agencies. Searches on the lake for the fire department, swift water rescues, it gives us a different perspective that we can't see from the shore uh, on, on different things. Uh, Technical rescues, of course, and then uh, wildfires uh, is something that unfortunately has been something that's really come to the forefront with drone usage. Uh, for the police department, you know, it's really could be used in detection missions that, you know, if we have a, a suspicious package, we can get a lot closer to it and aerial views and the zooms on, on the cameras are such that they're very clear and we can be at a very safe distance in the air and see what is um, what's out there. And then just high risk tactical operations could be barricaded suspects or, you know, you know, that sort of thing that we're able to monitor the whole situation from the air. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, they're becoming more useful in, in deployments in, in large uh, scale fires. Uh, this is a recent article from the campfire. Uh, the largest deployment of drone teams ever in, in U.S. history, 15 drone teams went up there to, to the campfire area from different agencies, whether they be law enforcement or fire. And really their role in, in what they did there was they were remapping towns, the whole town of Paradise, and integrating that into the GIS system with the pictures. So they were able to tell, you know, with the devastation that was there, they were able to tell where streets were, where different hotspots were, and, and that sort of thing for the response of the emergency uh, personnel. As far as the training goes, all pilots receive the same training, both uh, Truckee Fire and, and Truckee PD. Uh, we, th they were trained at the same time, uh, two different classes. The field flight training uh, was four days total for everybody that included uh, classroom training and actual practical flight training out in the field. Uh, and the PIX4D, which is a program that is used to do 3D imaging, um, was a three-day program that all the pilots went through. 
before the pilots can become operational, depending on their skill level, they have to fly and complete somewhere between 30 and 50 operational flights. Um, uh, as far as the federal regulations go, both Truckee Police Department and Truckee Fire Department have uh, applied for and obtained their required uh, certificate of waiver or authorization, which is we, we term as COA. Um, and what that does is dictate the flight operations within a certain radius around airports. Uh, anytime they were they would fly under the COA, they're required to to um, submit an operational plan and log the time and areas and all that that stuff for um, federal um, for the FAA. Um, and this is really within a certain radius of the airport. There is another certification that the pilots are all slowly being trained through because it's a much longer process, and that's the FAA Part 107. And it's basically similar to a pilot's license that they have to go through training, uh, classroom training, and then they take a certification test. What that does is allow us to fly outside of the, the strict COA zone without having to um, submit the the logging and operational plans. They still log everything for our purposes, but they don't have to turn it into the FAA. So this is a um, demonstration video of the drone flights, and I'll just talk through it. Um, this was taken from Tapa Tau Donner up in the Oberwald Wolfgang area, and I mean it, it's. The pictures here will show the difference in uh, clarity and then zoom capability on, on the first two videos. Same area and what you're looking at is Prosser Lake in the distance and the zoom that they go into is about a six mile distance from where the drone is flying. So obviously the closer you are the clearer that picture would be but um, it just shows the capability of the of the zoom and the clarity of it. Uh, the next video here, you'll see uh, a demonstration of the FLIR camera. This is a split screen. The one on the left is the exact same footage as the one on the right. So that's just a regular camera uh, early in the morning and uh, one of our officers walking down a street uh, with the FLIR camera. So you can see how valuable this would be in search and rescue um, and, and just locating subjects that you know, or hiding out or, you know, whatever the case may be. And then just some different flyover video. This will show um, the clarity of the zoom and looking into the river, uh, the clarity of the water. That's our Sergeant Renfro there. And this, the drone is about 200 feet up. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Danny out for a walk. And you can see the clarity of the water there. You know, this would be very easy to see. Um, you know, during a swift water rescue, you can really see if anything is caught on one side or the other of rocks, uh, that sort of thing. While Dan's uh, getting the presentation up, I'll just add that obviously the capabilities of the drones um, have a tremendous amount of use to us, but we also want to be respectful to that and also the politics around it. Uh, one of our main concerns and really waiting till this time to roll out this program was we had to let communities at large, not necessarily Truckee, get used to police departments having the capability to zoom in from that distance or use FLIR. So all those things can be used for good. They can also be used for bad. And it takes a lot of community trust to realize that we're not interested in flying over people's houses to watch what they're doing or peer in their windows or look for marijuana grows in the backyard. That's far from what we have any interest in doing. The vast majority of this, rather than the tactical applications, is going to be used for preservation of life and in conjunction with the fire department. So that's really, unfortunately, we've had instances where people have lost their lives in the lake, the river, uh, we're able to locate those people quicker, and then hopefully those that are not um, 
already passed away, we can find them in forests if they wandered away with the FLIR camera. I mean, it's all those capabilities. When we looked at some replacement of the current capabilities we have to reconstruct crime scenes and accidents, just was not cost effective compared to what these will do. So for the re remainder of the presentation, we'll be talking about the PIX4D software system. As the chief mentioned, we have a, a a system right now called total, total Station, and what that is used for is for major accident scenes um, to gather information and, and points that we can develop different um, maps of, of the area for, for the investigation purpose. Uh, what the PIX4D does is it allows us to uh, take um, aerial photographs, put it into a program, and it makes a 3D image of whatever whatever parameters we set on it. And you'll see an example of that here in a little bit with Detective Victor Vickers will come up here and show you. What would take us three hours with a road closed to map um, with the total station now will take 20 to 30 minutes um, with only two staff of a road closure to map with the drones and the PIX4D software. In conjunction with the drones, we also have a GoPro with a gimbal that allows us to take photographs on at the ground level, which you can't do with the drone because they can't get down that far. So we can add that all into a traffic accident scene and you would really have a 3D image from ground level all the way up and over uh, vehicles or whatever. What the GoPro also allows us to do is uh, map out a crime scene, plug it all into the PIX4D software and it would digitally map all that in a 3D image. Okay, so I'm going to go over uh, real quickly as far as uh, just kind of beginning to end in operations with these things. So uh, how this first starts out is we go to a scene that we essentially want to take pictures of. Um, and uh, we'll go out there, and it's as simple as bringing the, what, the equipment that you see uh, out there, uh, or excuse me, up on the table, and uh, your iPhone. Uh, the PIX4D software comes with an app, a mobile app. And what that allows us to do, as you can see up here on the screen, in this particular uh, incident, we decided to do a 3D rendering of Rainbow Bridge. And uh, we went up there, and as I zoom in, you will kind of, you'll see our location right here where we were actually uh, flying from. And we set the parameters of uh, what we wanted to shoot. And as you can see, uh, it's outlined right here. And what's nice about this software, as opposed to um, the Total Station software, as you saw before, which is a very basic uh, rendering of really any scene that you want to shoot. This has a nice overlay with Google Maps, so it really shows you what we're doing. And it's very, it's much more user friendly and much more visibly appealing. So while we're out there on scene, um, again, we pretty much uh, on our little mobile app on our phone, we could set the parameters of where we want to shoot. We hit go, and it's, a, it's an autopilot program. And it, uh, the drone will be up in the air for maybe five minutes, depending on the size that you want to shoot. And uh, it will take multiple pictures from different areas, all within that uh, grid pattern that you've established. And uh, in this particular uh, scene, it took 210 images. So it's actually taking pictures while it's moving. It's also stopping at set points. And uh, what's unique uh, about the t um, this PIX4D software is that each one of these images has a Latin long coordinate GPS associated with it, and I'll uh, explain why that's important here in a minute. But based upon all of these pictures taken, it assembles that 2D imagery uh, while also establishing this, this 3D imagery. And you can really see, uh, once these images come together, um, just the quality uh, that this allows us to do, um, which the total station did not. Um, it, uh, this all in all probably took 15 minutes to uh, do this entire rendering. And uh, what's nice about this um, is based upon the Latin long coordinates in each one of those photos that would uh, help generate uh, this software when it comes to um, maybe down the line doing some kind of traffic accident reconstruction or something like that, the GPS coordinates helps establish um, measuring points from point A to point B. We could choose any uh, location on this 3D rendering uh, and measure and get uh, a, a very uh, close, close measurements of uh, everything that we're doing here. And that helps us out big time uh, when 
if we go to a crime scene, if we go to a traffic accident and have to document it and maybe go to court later down the line, uh, we can do anything um, that's needed there and be precise, again, with all of our measurements. You could actually go with a GoPro uh, camera, you can go with an iPhone and go do, let's say I wanted to walk around this police car right here and take numerous images, a 360 around that car. I can then upload those images to this software and it's going to enhance the, uh, the image based upon on those new photos that you can do. Practical application for what we're using this for. It's uh, uh, probably a lot less uh, exciting, but as you can see here, um, we just did a mock traffic accident collision here. We went up to an empty parking lot up in uh, uh, the Tahoe Donner Ski area. And, and again, you can, uh, it's a Google map overlay that we use here to make it a lot more visually appealing and let people understand, hey, this is what we're looking at here. We set our parameters. Um, with uh, where we wanted to shoot the scene from. Uh, with this particular uh, scene that we documented here, we're looking at 201 images. And again, this took maybe five to six minutes to shoot. Overall, it took about 10 minutes. So um, a lot quicker than having to shut down a road and be uh, very much more manpower intensive for several hours on end to get this, uh, to get a lot less, I guess, from uh, what we're trying to capture here. So um, this will be a 3D model. Again, this was a very quick uh, uh, overflight. So we didn't do a lot of uh, secondary photos to enhance the 3D quality, but um, you know, for a 10 minute flight, it's pretty incredible what this captures on a 3D level. You can see the terrain difference and the elevation uh, between the three parking lots. How about Bill Saline, Fire Chief for the Truckee Fire Protection District? Thanks for having us tonight. Uh, you know, nice presentation. I think, you know, they did a nice job highlighting uh, the value of the drones. Uh, you know, they're uh, becoming a common tool in the fire service. On the last report from uh, some of our periodicals, 65% of fire agencies are using a drone, and, and uh, there's even, you know, more expanded capabilities uh, beyond this that uh, we'll get some value from. And, you know, with limited resources, uh, being able to uh, share uh, that with uh, Truckee Police Department is invaluable. We would not be able to uh, do that on our own, uh, and I think we'll be able to get the benefits of, uh, you know, having these uh, specialized tools. You know, there's this other side benefit that um, I'm sure you can imagine, you know, anytime we get to work with other public safety agencies like Truckee police where you know on day-to-day -day incidents and of course on a big emergency where um, that collaborative relationship and the communication that happens out on the field on the fly and these emergencies um, is really important and this is where those relationships get built in these different sort of collaborative uh, projects that we work on together so I get to watch that happen in the office and watch the pilots come in and, and the team work together on these things and it's a uh, it's a good little benefit that uh, we don't talk about often so that concludes our presentation. Do you have any questions for us? Thank you, uh, Dan and Chief Olson and Chief Celine.